Good evening, everyone. We're just waiting for participants to join the meeting. We'll be with you in a minute. Mr. Weber, should we start or are we waiting still? I believe we have maybe a few more people trickling in. Okay. We might give it another 15 or 20 seconds, I think would be safe to start. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual freshman and new student orientation. I am Mary Gans, the very proud principal here at Falmouth High School. I am entering my sixth year as principal and I'm so fortunate to work at such a wonderful school. While I certainly wish we could be meeting in person, I am glad you have joined us for this virtual orientation. With me here tonight to welcome you to FHS are some incredible administrators, Assistant Principal Tom McManaman, Assistant Principal Henry St. Julian, Guidance Director Alan Kazarian, Special Education Building Administrator Audra Riley, and our phenomenal guidance counselors, Susanna Brooks, Kurt Lawson, Rachel Payne, and Lindsay Ruthman. My first encounter with FHS was exactly in your shoes as a parent when my oldest daughter was entering ninth grade 12 years ago back in 2008. I vividly recall both the excitement and the nervousness that go hand in hand with starting not only a new school, but starting high school. And this school year brings with it a whole new set of questions and concerns that we have never encountered before. I can assure you, however, that even with COVID-19 looming over us, FHS is still an amazing school with an incredible faculty and student body. All three of my daughters graduated from FHS, so I can tell you not only as the principal, but as a parent, that each and every student in this school has the opportunity to achieve great success here. To help with your child's transition to FHS, it is critical to have open communication between home and school. So please know that I am always available. Never hesitate to contact me with any questions whatsoever. That's my job. My direct phone extension here is 4050. Please feel free to call or email me anytime. So again, welcome to Falmouth High School. You are official FHS Clippers now, and we are so very excited to have you on board here tonight and hope you enjoy your virtual visit. I will now turn the evening over to Mr. McManaman, who is the grade nine assistant principal. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Falmouth High School. Uh, as Mary said, as Mrs. Gann said, my name is Tom McManaman. Uh, most students call me Mr. Mac. I am the assistant principal that works uh, with ninth graders. Um, this is a little strange for me. Uh, this is one of my favorite nights, usually getting into the auditorium tonight and seeing all the ninth graders and their families come in and seeing our, our new Clippers walk in the door. And so uh, it's a little impersonal to sit in this webinar with you and go over these same things, but I'm so excited to see you in a couple weeks. And uh, we've revised our usual presentation tonight because it is such a different year this year um, and what we're going through and uh, the way school is structured. So. Um, Without further ado, I'm going to get into it. Uh, we, as you know by now, did have to split our student body population into cohorts based on uh, DESE's guidelines, the, the body that um, we have to obey, the Educational Board of Massachusetts. We were not able to fit all the students in Falmouth High School this year. Um, and just, you know, based on good science and the, the news and everything else, um, we've split the majority of our school into two main cohorts, cohort A and cohort B. There are two smaller cohorts as well. We have a small cohort of students who will be in school crossing over both cohorts. So they'll be in school every week. They are our every week cohort. And we have another group of students who have chosen to remain fully remote uh, for at least the beginning of this year. And so they are our remote cohort, but we are still making sure they're fully involved in everything going on at Falmouth High and the courses and everything else. So uh, when we're talking about in-person learning, the, the, you know, students coming to school, during most weeks, you'll see either cohort A and the everyday cohort together, 
uh, in school, or it'll be a cohort B week with the every week cohort. Um, our in-person days at Falmouth High School are gonna be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday is remote for every student on most weeks. Uh, and so that's even our every week cohort will be remote at that point in time. So uh, along with that, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education asked schools to consider a gradual opening this year. And so with that in mind, uh, Falmouth High is using the following calendar over our first three weeks of school. You may have seen this already, uh, and that begins next Monday with a fully remote week for all students. That's gonna be a chance for students to get to know their teachers uh, through our learning management system, Schoology, and through probably things like Zoom or Google Meet uh, meetups where they'll be able to see their whole class and see the teacher. So that's remote for everyone. Uh, Mrs. Gaines has done a great job of, of communicating with families. So make sure you're checking both uh, parent emails and student emails for more details on next week. But the long and short of it is, Next Monday, classes start at the normal time, uh, you know, just before 7.30 in the morning. And at that time, students should be logging into the Schoology platform and clicking on their period one class to get going and get started. The following two weeks are really that gradual reopening I was talking about. Those will be, uh, for the in-school days, half days of school. And uh, Superintendent Dewar asked that we really even limit our population even more for those first two weeks. So what we're looking at is uh, the first two days there, September 28th and 29th, we've split cohort A in half at that point. So we've got what we're calling uh, for those two days, cohort A1. It's the first 25% of the alphabet basically on the whole. Wednesday will be remote for everybody. And then Thursday and Friday of that week, October 1st and 2nd, we've got cohort A2, the last half of cohort A. And I'll talk more in a minute about how you know which cohort you are in. Uh, the following week, we're doing something very similar uh, and, and we're splitting cohort B in half. So Monday and Tuesday, we've got cohort B1, the first half of cohort B. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we've got cohort B2, the second half of cohort B. And that's just for in school. Every student is still logging onto Schoology, whether they're working in school or working remotely from home. Um, so every student, even if you, you are not part of the cohort reporting on a specific day, you are still involved in your class. You are still tasked with um, following the school schedule at the school periods and everything that goes along with that. The week of October 5th, we are skipping that remote Wednesday, and that's because October 9th of that was an already scheduled professional development day. Uh, I imagine that, you know, the next week, Monday is a holiday. We're still waiting to get the final details on the schedule for that week. I imagine the next week will probably follow uh, a similar model where we don't have a remote Wednesday and uh, we'll kick off full cohort A that next Tuesday after the holiday. And, uh, get going that way. But we'll keep communicating with families and with students with calendars like this or, or emails so you know exactly what's coming when. And Mr. Mack, can I interject for a minute? Just so Absolutely. students and families know, tomorrow you will be receiving information from me via email, um, both students and families, regarding what to look for and how to start school on Monday, September 21st. Thank you very much. So um, along with changing how we were introducing school to everyone, we also had to change our basic schedule. And um, uh, we were really concerned with the number of transitions we had in a day that we had six classes meeting every day. Students sign up for seven classes. And we really wanted to limit uh, how much students were moving in between classes in the hallway, things like that, just to try and keep everyone safe and healthy. Um, so what we've done is we've moved to more of a block schedule. And what you'll see on most weeks is that <clears throat> Excuse me. On Monday, you'll have periods one, two, and three. And on Tuesday, you have what we've historically called our diagonal period. Um, so it'll be the diagonal period and then periods four, five, and six. At the end of each day, um, one of the things that we've uh, introduced to Falmouth High School over the last few years. It's really become part of the fabric of what we do, something called clipper time. That's a flexible block where students can get more timely help from teachers on a regular basis. 
when we were talking to students, to parents, to our teachers, and to each other, one of the things every one of those groups said is we really want to keep Clipper time in some manner over this year. Um, and so we've been able to do that at the end of the day, uh, every single day that we have students in class. And I will be able to talk more specifically about that in a couple of minutes. I will say, I know we're going through a lot today. And I know that the way this, um, the webinar, uh, model of Zoom is set up that allows us to get this many people uh, into a, a chat at once or into a meeting at once doesn't allow for the um, full on question, question and answer period throughout uh, presentation. We are going to allow uh, later on if you have questions that, that you can ask them. So I'll talk more about that. Write them down as you go here and we'll figure out a way to answer all the questions you have. Um, as I said, those first two weeks when, well, the first week is fully remote. The following two weeks when we have only 25% of the students in, um, the district is also on a whole going with a half day schedule. And so um, we've just shortened the day, but the same periods will meet on the day of the week. So whatever periods would have met Monday, will still meet on a Monday, just in a more condensed format in this half day schedule. Um, for students, those half days are full learning days, though, uh, that they are considered full learning days. So we build in a lunch break after the dismissal, uh, which is at 11, dismissals at 11.15, we'll have a grab and go lunch. And at 12.15, um, students will have some work to complete at home remotely as well. So you're wondering about your schedules and how they work and how they look. That's the most important thing. Um, so I want to talk for a minute about PowerSchool and the way you can navigate it. <clears throat> and what I'll uh, just remind you is a lot of the features I'm going to discuss tonight in PowerSchool, uh, you only see through the website. You don't see through the mobile app. So I really encourage you, if you're looking at PowerSchool as a student or a parent, uh, log in you know, through a web browser on a computer. Okay, so uh, I have a sample student schedule here in front of you, and you see that this student is taking Spanish, woodworking, uh, PE and health, English, so on and so forth uh, down the, the course line in the middle here. Um, to the left, you'll see it says one, two, and then we get this strange 2B, 3C, 4D, uh, and then we have three clipper time, four, five, six, and uh, REM, which is standing for remote. That is a funky view, I know. And basically, uh, the reason it, it's imperfect in this initial view is because we've had to take our old schedule and um, through PowerSchool, which is, ha has a lot of facility to it and allows us to do a lot of great things, try and work our old schedule into our new schedule in a way that we can still revert back to our old schedule when we have more uh, regular schooling in front of us. So here's the way you can fix that. When you log on to PowerSchool online, if you look on the left-hand side where that red circle just appeared, you will see something called My Schedule. You're gonna to wanna to click on My Schedule and there's a couple great things on this screen for you. First of all, it has a bell schedule for you. So it actually tells you Monday at 725, I have Spanish until 836. At 841, I have woodworking. It tells you the day of the week and the exact time that you're gonna meet these classes. It also uh, adapts itself. So on remote Wednesdays, we can see exactly what classes we are meeting when we are home working remotely. The other nice thing about this uh, version of the schedule is right up top here in bold and in red, it tells you exactly what cohort you are assigned to. So you know exactly when to report to school, uh, what week, what day, so on and so forth. So just very briefly on Clipper time, uh, again, this would be, I think our sixth year uh, using Clipper time. It is a flexible learning block. Usually in a, in a regular year, it takes place between periods three and four. We usually have uh, students meet with a mentor teacher on Mondays and that mentor teacher helps them uh, schedule for clipper time for the remainder of the week and, and might sit with them and say, hey, you're falling behind in math. Let's get you in with your math teacher later this week or I know you were absent. Did you have to make anything up? Let's get you in with that teacher. Um, so the way we've, changed and adapted Clipper time this year. Depending on the day, students are going to stay with either their period six teacher or they will meet with a pair of teachers who will act as that student's mentors. 
students will stay in the room they're assigned to for the entirety of Clipper time, uh, but every teacher is still on duty during Clipper time. So we've figured out a way for students to be able to reach out virtually. Um, we have scheduling software that we're going to use with them and we'll instruct them how to use. And what it's going to allow for is students to be able to, you know, get some work done. They can work independently, but if um, they need some extra help or if a teacher is identifying them as someone they need to catch up with, maybe the student missed an assignment or needs a little help with a specific skill or content area, um, the teacher can then schedule that student into Clipper time and they can meet over Zoom or something like that to have a conversation and figure out what's going on. So we're excited that we get to keep Clipper time, that, that we get to push forward with it, we're adapting to it. And we recognize um, with all of this, there are gonna be some growing pains, there are gonna be some bumps in the road along the way. Um, but we've got such dedicated teachers and staff members here at Falmouth High School who are just, uh, I think, really dying for kids to walk back in the door so we can work with students, so we can help you, so uh, we can help you freshmen and you new students um, move on in Falmouth High School. Um, just very briefly, so you get an idea, the, the freshman schedule is a little more constrained than other years. Um, students have to earn 96 credits to graduate from Falmouth High School, and we take care of a lot of those really heavy core requirements in the freshman and the sophomore year. Uh, and what that does is it allows in your junior and senior year the, the road to open a little more and for you to take uh, more elective opportunities, things that maybe are a little more uh, personally interesting to you as you get those requirements out of the way. So every freshman is going to take a freshman English class, a math class, and that's uh, either algebra or geometry, <clears throat> a biology class, uh, a freshman U.S. history class. This is new this year. Freshmen uh, historically have taken modern world history. There's been a big shift over the last few years in uh, the state frameworks for social studies. And so with that, uh, our social studies department has worked really hard on its scope and sequence to make this shift. So freshmen and sophomores now take U.S. history. Uh, there's a world language requirement. That's either Spanish, French, or Latin. Every freshman takes a semester length STEM course and a semester length uh, physical education and health course. And then what that leaves is one open spot, one period for most students, that's two semester length electives. I think the only exceptions to that rule are our music courses, choir, and uh, some of our band offerings. Uh, those are year long elective courses. So instead of being an elective followed by another elective, it would just be the one year long elective. So the logistics of school and how things are actually going to work this year and what's going to be different for you as parents and you as students coming in. Um, I will preface this by saying on Monday, we are going to push out to all students uh, a video that Mr. Weber helped us put together that's really going to detail uh, more of these new guidelines and rules for what it means to come to school. Um, but we wanted to repeat a few of them tonight because they're so important because we need students to follow uh, all of these health and safety guidelines that we've had to put in place. So for arrival and dismissal, if you're on a bus that will drop you off at the main entrance. Um, student drivers uh, who are coming to school will park in the student lot and come in the closest entrance on the side of the building to the student lot. Parents will come into the same parking lot as students if you're dropping off uh, a student, parents and guardians, um, and you'll drop off in the middle of the building, which is right behind cafeteria B. We will have some signage out there. We will also have, especially the first few days, uh, some people out there kind of guiding you where the drop off spot will be. You'll drive all the way around the building, drop off in the middle and continue driving around exiting by the softball field. Uh, we want you to be really careful about that arrival time, though, because no students will be allowed to enter the building prior to 7.15 a.m. Um, the first period will begin at 7.25 a.m. for those in-person days. Dismissal locations at the end of the day are the same as arrival locations. Um, and for you new students, um, you know, usually you're, you're walking through the building tonight. We're meeting you. We're, we're helping guide you to these courses to give you an idea of the way the building looks. 
And so I know that's probably a little nerve wracking knowing that you're going to come in, you're just going to have to find your classrooms. Um, but we've got some teachers that have volunteered themselves on the first day and also some veteran clippers here, some upperclassmen um, who we're going to identify. We'll, we'll give them some way to identify them so you can see them in the hallways, especially during those first periods in the first weeks. And if you need help finding your class, you just go up to one of these people and they will guide you along the way. Um, so the logistics of school continued here. The majority of hallways and staircases are one way at Falmouth High School this year. These are clearly labeled around the building. Um, every student will be provided with a map. We've also, because of this, extended our passing time between periods uh, to allow for staggered dismissal from class. Um, teachers are going to be dismissing students by rows to try and take some of the stress off the congestion in the hallways. Uh, unfortunately, only one student is allowed in a bathroom at a time. Bathrooms are going to be closed completely during passing periods, uh, and we can only let one student leave a classroom at a time to head to the bathroom. So uh, I, I know these are tough rules and guidelines, but again, it is for everyone's health and safety. Uh, we will also have bathroom monitors at each bathroom to monitor appropriate physical distancing. Very important coming into a new school lunch. We will have two lunch waves um, and your lunch is going to take place either right before or right after block C. You will know what that assignment is on your first day of school. Um, unfortunately, students are going to have assigned desks at lunch. We really have to be careful about keeping students six feet apart at lunch, especially because they'll be taking their masks off. Um, and they'll be eating at that point in time. So that is a mask break for us. So we will have desks in the cafeteria and those desks will be assigned to students at least for the time being. Um, if guidelines change, we, uh, I'm sure can revisit that, but that's the way you know, we really have to start, unfortunately. Um, so again, you will learn what that seating assignment is on your first day of school. We've built another mask break into our day. Uh, and again, if you're lunch is before block C, your mass break is after block C, uh, and the reverse is true as well. You have a, if your lunch is after block C, your mask break will take place before it. I have a lot of links here, and so what I'm going to do uh, after this presentation is done is share this PowerPoint with uh, all of our freshmen and new students. Um, and these are really, I can't stress enough how important it is for all of you new students to make sure you're checking your school email on a regular basis, um, especially right now with so much of our work happening remotely, that's gonna be the way that the school, that I, that Mrs. Gans, that your guidance counselor, it's gonna be the way we all communicate with you. So please make sure you are checking that school email. Um, so you'll have these links coming to you soon in that, but just very quickly here, we, before school starts, a, a few important things. Make sure you have a device, uh, a, a computer that works. We are a one-to-one -one school. So if you need a Chromebook, uh, we will get you one and you would email CB Repair, that's Chromebook Repair at falmouth.k12.ma.us. We wanna, again, make sure you log on to your uh, school Gmail account, make sure you know how to do that. And uh, I have a link to some instructions if you need to know how to do that. We want you to make sure before Monday you log on to Schoology just to make sure you understand how to do that. That is how you're going to access all of your courses really. Uh, so we have some instructional videos that we've put out on logging into Schoology recently and I've got a link to that. We want you to make sure you log into PowerSchool so you know how to uh, check your schedule, check your cohort, check your grades. Uh, and there's a link to how to log on to PowerSchool there. And then uh, finally, really important, it is a long document, but it is so vital that you look over the FHS COVID-19 guidebook. Um, that's got all the rules. And, and uh, I think one of the most important things you need to know is there are so many rules this year because we care about all students because we want everyone to be healthy and safe and uh, we, we really don't have any wiggle room on those rules on uh, we have to be zero zero tolerance to some degree about some of this stuff and so we just want to make sure uh, we are explicit and clear about what those rules are and we want to make sure uh, you guys read all of that stuff so you know what's expected of you State assessments, MCAS, everything TBD at this point. The state has not come out with their schedule. They continue to say that uh, they believe MCAS should and will happen this year. In a normal year, that means that the science 
uh, test for ninth graders, which is biology for our freshmen, takes place in June of this year. And usually for grade 10 students, that means um, the ELA is in March and math is in April or May. Um, but again, all to be determined at this point. So um, that was a lot of information. And I, uh, I, again, have trouble in the webinar format because I can't see your faces to know how, how you're taking everything in. Um, but I, I want to stress that we are available to you, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But we also wanted to end with you hearing from some Falmouth High students. Uh, on this night, usually we have six or eight freshmen or six or eight sophomores, um, last year's freshmen, come and just talk about their experience um, and, and talk about what Falmouth High has meant to them. And we wanted to still uh, make sure we kept that a part of our presentation. So we had some friends come visit us uh, yesterday, and I'm going to play that for you now. One of the things that I really like about Falmouth are all of the academic classes that we offer. Um, so for most courses, there is a CP level, an honors level, and an AP level. So you get a lot of flexibility in the courses and the levels that you can take in them. Um, my junior year, I took AP Calculus and AP Psych, and those classes were really interesting because they got me to think in critical ways and differently than how I normally do, and it was just super interesting. First off, the teachers here are amazing, and they're super helpful with whatever you need. Also, there's lots of opportunities with honor societies and uh, from ranging from Spanish, art, uh, math honor society, national honor society. I play uh, basketball and football. And what's special about sports at uh, Falmouth is uh, the connections you make, the friendships you make with uh, teammates, coaches, even uh, teachers get involved in the sports as well. So it's a good thing to be a part of makes high school easier. You get through it a lot faster, you have a lot more friends, and it helps with uh, the experience you get at Falmouth High School. Um, one of the things I love about Falmouth High School is how this community is so great together. Like we all help each other to make things happen. Like for instance, we all came together so we all could go to school and just make this happen all together. And then as Julian was saying, like the sport community is really great and once you join a sport, it's like a whole new family. So like you have your own family, of course. But once you get to school, it's great to have like friends and everyone around you. So when you go to a sport after school, if you don't have anything to do, obviously, you just have like another support system there with you. Other people who can help you out other than like your family. Is there someone else to talk to? And then the teachers are really great also. Like for instance, I do track and my coach, he's one of the teachers here and I go to him like for everything practically and he just really helps out a lot. And like all the other sports does that obvious also, but as my experience, that's why I do track because it helps me get through things and you know, like all my other personal problems. And just like this community of like this whole high school is just really great. Everyone's like there for each other and it just, this is a good um, environment to be around. So I, I think it says so much about the, the culture of our school, um, you know, that these students um, love this school enough and, and thought about their experience uh, over the last few years that they came in, you know, they, they didn't have to come in this week. They decided to come in, they decided to, you know, uh, show you by wearing a mask that, um, that they're excited to come back and they're excited to have you all here as well. So I know that this presentation uh, takes on a little different tone this year than uh, our, our normal, like we're great to see you all and, and have you all here, but um, I can't stress enough how excited I am to have you in a week from Monday, hopefully, and uh, to, to see everyone, whether it's your uh, a full-time in student, a cohort AB student, or a fully remote student. We're gonna find a way to touch base with you, to keep up with you, um, and, and to you know, make this year um, the, the best possible year we can, given the circumstances. Mr. Weber, our technology genius, just texted me and said, we're at 173 participants, which is unreal. Uh, that is basically the entire freshman class. So thank you all for being here. Um, Again, I'm gonna send this PowerPoint out to all of you so that you have the information. It's so much to take in at this point. Um, we are going to move on in a second here to our counselor groups. Before that, does anyone else here on the panel have anything they would like to or need to say? I would just quickly like, um, again, to echo what Mr. McManaman said, that we're really looking forward to starting the school year and seeing all of our students, including our 100% remote students, 
we're just very excited. We put a lot of safety protocols in place to make sure that all of the students are safe. We hope you know that, that we really take this seriously. And again, if anybody has any questions whatsoever, my extension here at the high school is 4050 and um, I'm available to talk anytime whatsoever. So thank you for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, so we're, we're going to move into the, the portion of the evening where you are going to have a chance more face to face to meet with your guidance counselor, the guidance counselor you will have for the next four years. Um, I, I'm just going to stress again, our guidance staff does such a, an amazing job. They, they really work hard to give every student not only what they need, but really what they want and what, what they hope for. So uh, I'm excited for you to get into those meetings and, and actually have a conversation. Um, what I will ask is this, if you had questions uh, during my part of the presentation, um, things that you need answered, you can email me, of course, you can email uh, Mrs. Gans, Mrs. Mr. Kazarian, Ms. Riley as well. Um, or if you wanted to ask a counselor, they may not know uh, the answer to a specific uh, question. And at, at that point, they will just refer them back to us and we will make sure to get in touch with you. Um, but please feel free to reach out. We can't wait to see you all back at Falmouth High. So what is going to happen now, I think, um, Mr. Weber is probably going to put into the chat the links that I sent you uh, last week. Those links, um, the first link was to this meeting. The second link told you who your guidance counselor uh, is and also gave you the link for that breakout session. So. If you've got that link, um, you can click on it at this point. I'm going to, Mr. Weber, can I stop sharing my screen? Or should I just leave it up at this point? Either way, you're good to go. Chat okay. is shared with everyone. Okay. In Yeah, I see it right now in the chat. Um, you can click on those links depending on who your counselor is, and it'll take you to your next meeting. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And uh, I'll let you get to the next part. Thank you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. 